Next contest is singles bout, scheduled for one fall. Ladies and gentlemen, no, this is not your normal heel fan news. This is actually matchup. And joining me for matchup, like always, my puppet Joel. How you been, buddy? Yeah, doing all right. I'll always love to be here on Heel Fan News. Thank you. Um, really quick before we get into the matches, I heard a rumor running through Wyandotte yeah. that you're working on a haunted house this year. Oh well, yeah. Thanks for the plug. That's true. Uh, that's through the Wyandotte JCs, Kindred Haunted House. We're currently in the production phase, uh, and this fall you'll be able to find this at Old City Hall, thirty-one thirty-one Biddle. Nice. So, um, like I said, we got two matches. One is a championship match, and another one is a singles match. Now, the singles match came from uh, to us from Pro Wrestling All Stars, and it's an international star versus a local star. Mm. And then for the Down River Championship, right across the street at the Yak that just happened not too long ago. That's right. So uh, we're gonna have those for you and more, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Hey, this is your boy Pete, and if you're a wrestler, a manager. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Harper, and alongside me, like I said earlier, is Mud Puppet Joe, and we're about to call some action, buddy. All right, so here we've got in the in the black trunks. You and I have been practicing his name a lot. Yes. And we think we've got it down now. Kaito Kayamaya. Well, and then he's facing my favorite. El Mondo Del Diablo. And of course he is in the in the pants there, the long pants there. Yes, with his uh, nice red colors on it. Follow me is what it says on the side of his trunks there. So Harper, where does this match come to us from? Well, it comes to us from Pro Wrestling All-Stars, Stars, Stripes, and Slams. And it happened Friday, July 14th of 2017. Oh, where's PWAS located? Well, it's at the wonderful, wonderful Play Atlantis in Melvindale, Michigan. So... As one of you want to call it. It's a little lock up there, up and over, down below. Ooh. Kaito gave him the elbow and sent his opponent down to the mat. Goes up. Nice to uh, deliver elbow right to the heart. You can't go wrong with a good elbow to the heart. Now oh, put him in a little arm bar there. And that is referee Tanaka. I like to call him Kit Kat because he does remind me of the guy from the library commercial. The Kit Kat commercial? Let me get a good look at his face. You'll see what I'm talking about. Needless to say, these fans are sitting on their hands like always, idiots. God, you and just going on about the fans again. Well, you know, my one of my good friends, Mud Puppet Ryan, mm -hmm. opened my eyes. And these fans are idiots. That was years ago, man. A nice clothesline there. Mm -hmm. Kaito regaining control in this match. Yeah, you bring a guy from Japan and fight a good, wholesome uh, devil worshiper, and what? this is what you get. Oh, uh, what? Well, I don't even know what to say to that. It's word salad. There's a cover here. Yeah, that's going to take a little more than that, Mr. Diablo. Now, this is a singles match. There's no title on the line, no nothing, just singles match. Well, they can't all be title matches. you you got to move your way up in the ranks. Uh, you know, there's only one guy on top of the mountain at a, at a time. And it's uh, not the Japanese guy. I can't remember his name. Kaito. Okay, thank you. There you go. I thought we had it down, man. <laughs> you have it down, not me. Needless to, ooh, what an elbow to the gut. Oh, he's getting them a couple times. This is a fan cam. The fans submitted this to us. You know, I asked for some videos, and fans are starting to send them in. So you got a whole little legion out at these shows for you. Yes, I do now. There's a cover there by Mr. El Mondo Del Diablo. Ooh, that referee counted a little slow there. That should have been a three count. It's a mouthful, too, you know, the El Mondo Del Diablo. Yeah, that's why I just call him Diablo. Now stretching him in the ropes, and the referee's got to break this up here. This is illegal in wrestling, just like in boxing, from familiar boxing. If you're on the ropes, you got to break that hold. you got to get out of there. But remember, he's gotten to the count of five. Yes, he oh, does. Oh, what a roll-up. Ooh, not a bad strategy there. I'll give it to him. You go, go from the ropes and do a quick little roll-up. Maybe you surprise your opponent. Well, Kaito you? was able to kick out there, however. I had to grab the tights myself. Give yourself a little leverage. That's, that's why the title of the show is Heel Fan, right? Exactly. Ooh, what a knee lift to the gut. Yeah, you know, a bit of a back and forth here between these two. Uh, early stages looked like Kaito had things going for him, but uh, Armando Del Diablo has found a way to turn this into a seesaw affair, and right now he is the one in control. That's that near takedown and Ooh. an elbow of his own. Well, you know, uh, he, he's alone here at Pro Wrestling All Stars, but. El Mondo Del Diablo, when he's at XI, he's controlled by Dr. Repsia. Is that so? Oh, yes. Mm, a few fans out there are not familiar with Dr. Repsia. 
Uh, you want to give yourself some nightmares, Google that. <laughs> Ooh, what a reversal. Absolutely. That could have been the match there. It looked like perhaps uh, Del Diablo was going for a, perhaps a, some sort of a neck breaker, but nicely reversed. And again, though, just I'll tell you what, he likes those kicks to the gut, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's always on top of his opponents. That's what I like about Diablo. He's got him on the ropes again, applying a chokehold. Diablo doesn't play around. He's a straight to action kind of guy who wants to hurt his opponents and wants to get that W. Yeah, I can see that. So no nonsense here. He's using every area of the ring, an elbow to the, to the side of the head there. Um, he's just seemingly doing what it takes to get the upper hand in this match. And he's, right now he's got Kaito flat on his back. And Kaito looks like he's looking to the fans for help. But I'm sorry, but when you're in that ring in a singles match, you're all alone. There's no help. Well, no, it's like it's sort of like the the sixth man in basketball, right? You know, um, the crowd. They can they can pump you up and get you back into it, give you some inspiration. I and mean, sometimes you need that. Diablo's got the Cobra clutch. Yeah, right now he's in full control of this matchup. But no argument here. He's he's putting his opponent to sleep. And he's fading. That referee needs to check that arm. He, well, you see the referee is engaging Kaito right there, and Kaito, you know, his shoulders were down for a moment, but now he's back up a bit. He's off his shoulders, anyways. He's trying to get to the rope. He's inching there. And, hey, he's got to the count of five. He can hold that for another three seconds. Oh. No, no disputes here. I just just mentioned it earlier in the match, so our fans were aware. And this referee is laying into Diablo, which he shouldn't. He should be more worried about the guy who's not getting back in the ring. Look, a little reminder of the rules on occasion from the official, I, I think, is just the official doing his due diligence. Nice job there. It's Kaito's and then sunset flip from the outside into the pinfall. Count it two. Just Ooh, a two count it's there. Take a little more than that to take out Diablo. Another kick, that one to the chest. He's got his feet are weapons, that's for sure. Here we go. Kaito starting to feel it now, perhaps, with both men down on the mat. I'll give uh, Diablo this. Every time it's looked like Kaito might build a little bit of momentum, he takes it right back out of him with a kick to the gut, an elbow to the side of the head. The guy's fierce. And here we go with the count on both men down. Referee saying both men are up, and ooh, Kaito is... Uh, some haymakers of elbows there. Yeah, you know, he might be going a little more into Del Diablo's wheelhouse here, and it may get him in trouble. We'll see. Nice Ooh. flying forearm there. Throws him into the center of the ring. Now he's feeling it, getting pumped up. And you see the fans giving him a round of applause for that. He's going wasting up Wasting time. Wasting time talking to the fans. Huh? That could be something that can hurt you later in line. Beautiful drop kick from the top rope there. Into the cover. One, two, and the Not near enough. three count. Not enough. You need a little more than that to take down Diablo. That's yeah, well, sure. that may be so, but El Mano del Diablo, man, is that a mouthful. That's why I call him Diablo. He, <laughs> he, may, he may be allowing Kaito to get into his wheelhouse now. Well, he attempted a belly to back, but El Mano being as crafty as he is, he got out of it. Yeah, went for the simple knee to the gut. Ooh, that is an event of Russian leg sweep. Into the, the breaker. Got himself... About a two and a half there. So again, he's turned the tide successfully, and you wonder if that was the last gasp uh, for Kaito there. And it's time for the hand of the devil. Here we go. No, he's not doing the hand of the devil. He's going to do the devil's eye. Oh, he's stopping him. Yeah, Kaito throwing some elbows of his own to the side of the head, but he's he looks gassed. He's he's winded. Uh, Del Diablo certainly looks much fresher. Another beautiful drop kick. That one looked right to the mush there. Diablo back up again, swing and a miss. Belly to back, oh. into the pin. Two, Two and three, he got oh. him. Well, you know what? I think it was Del Diablo's lone mistake of this match right there. And it cost him because he had Kaito on the ropes, literally and figuratively, almost this entire match. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's your winner. Uh, we will be back with our second matchup, our main event, matter of fact. So stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash heelfannews. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash heelfannews. And follow us on Instagram at heel underscore fan underscore news 78. Bulls nose to nose. 
Well, Buddy Hand, I don't know if he's a guy I'll have, quite honestly. He'd have to do some serious mission work or something. But I got, I got to take issue with, with another thing with Dre Jacobs, though. You know what that is? He's wearing a giant loincloth. What is that about? It's about the power of the bee, baby. The power of the bee? No, power to be, baby. The power to be. Black power. Black power. See, 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 see what that was? Huh. So he's, okay. He's revitalizing that movement, bringing that to the pro wrestling arena. Well, you know, that makes some sense. I mean, there were members of the former Nation of Domination in attendance at this event, correct? Ron Simmons and D.L. Yes. Brown? Yes. Well, these guys, I got to say, they're, when they were, they went nose to nose there moments ago. Uh, similar size and makeup. It's going to be interesting to see how they approach Ooh. that. Dre went in the clothesline. No, Chris Moore going for the mercenary driver right off the bat. Well, that's apparently how they're going to approach it. Smash mouth right out of the gate. You know, a lot of times in a matchup, it's fun to compare and contrast opponents because they come with different styles. A guy might be a grappler. A guy might be a brawler. A guy might be a high flyer. These two seem like they're cut from the same cloth. Well, you know, you know, we had the rankings going around, and Dre Jacobs was number one contender for the longest time. And Chris Moore shot past him because he beat him at Proving Ground. And that's how he got his title shot and won. And well, now we have to give Dre hits. Look at this. These two behemoths just exchanging blows. Ooh. Shot after shot. And right now, Chris Moore seems to be getting the better of it. Off the ropes. And he eats a boot. Now, Jacob's off the ropes. He swings, but he's caught. He gets himself suplexed to the mat. And so far, I got to say, I like the tempo that these two are setting. Oh, my God, Johnny Delicious almost fell. Did you not see that? Yeah. He got tripped by a fan. So we know he can talk, but apparently he can't walk. <laughs> you might want to take a class on that, Mr. Delicious. And Chris Moore is trying to get this, this crowd behind him. Now, this is where, where I'm confused. Why is that? At Pro Wrestling All-Stars, when he defeated Atlas Hightower, everybody booed him. He def you know, and then here he's facing Dre Jacobs. Everybody's cheering him. Different crowd, man. Yeah, well, the Down River hates to love him and loves to hate him, so... Downriders can be a little bipolar at times, maybe. Yeah, a little, you know, a bunch of goons. And now, that was a mistake by Chris Moore. And, oh, Dre Jacobs going out. So, so these two, some big men that can move. Some 747s, baby. <laughs> I don't know about the suicide dive through the ropes if I'm either one of these guys. You saw it, it didn't work out when Chris Moore went for it. He paid for it, and it was a mistake. He was holding the high ground. He had got the better of Dre Jacobs to that point. Why be suckered into his game plan? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is XICW's Attack at the Yak 2 at the wonderful Yak Arena here in Wyandotte, Michigan. And it happened on Saturday, July 29th. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but XICW has a, a huge show coming up, a historic show. Yes. At Kobo Arena. Yes, they will be doing Kobo Arena for the first time. First time wrestling in Kobo since the 80s, man. That's a big, big thing. Big thing happening for them, and you know they're going to have a lot of people there, a lot of legends. You know, uh, Bobby DeBrain Heenan will be there for the convention before the wrestling show. And oh, Chris Moore is just yeah. attacking that midsection. And I got to say though, any any time a guy has got you outnumbered, as Dre Jacobs has Chris Moore outnumbered with Johnny Delicious out there, you don't. This is not where you want to be. Now Chris Moore may be in control now, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, ooh, there he is, the underhanded tactics, a little rake to the eyes. I guarantee you, Johnny Delicious is going to poke his nose in when he can. They're right there with the crowd, man. They're at the gate, beating the heck out of each other. And I think that this official needs to, I don't know if he's, he's got the count out going here. It seems he does, but he, he's in trouble. This is where, as an official, you can get in trouble losing control of this matchup, and this is a championship match. Exactly. Well, there he is. There's Johnny Delicious talking to the... Ooh, what a reversal. And Trey Jacobs ate some steel. Right in front of one of his own fans. Did you see there's a fan with a shirt on out there? I didn't see that. Yeah, one fan wearing a Trey I, Jacobs shirt. Are you sure one you're not delusional? Fan. I'm positive I'm not delusional. Right a running knee, and Trey Jacobs is losing at his own game right now. Well, like I said, Chris Moore and Dre Jacobs are both powerhouses. Absolutely. They're big men that you don't want to mess with in a dark alley, for sure. Ooh, this is just, this is, this, I mean, this is this is about what I would expect between two guys of this ilk. Just a knockdown, drag out brawl. 
Now they're just, just trading haymakers, trading knees. Look like they're finally getting back into the ring now. And it's Jacobs with the upper hand. And referees, you know, I've seen referees lose control of matches, but this referee seems to have it well under control. With the exception of John Delicious poking his nose in like you said he was going to. Oh, so you've seen that as well. Oh, yes, I did. All right. And I got I to gotta hand it to you, Harper. It was right here on Heel Fan News that you and Dean introduced the Down River Championship. And here we go. The, the, the preeminent independent promotion in Michigan, XICW, and that title being defended at that venue. Pretty right. impressive. Oh, yeah. Ooh, what a miss with the cannonball. Yeah, and again, again, I, I get it. I get it. Some of these, these bigger guys, they, they want to be able to move like a smaller man, but hard to replicate that when you've got that much size and muscle on you. That's not a big man's move right there. He no. just attempted, and he paid for it. Well, I, I, you know, there's another big man in the business that uses it, and his name is Congo Cole. Right? He never misses. So. Okay, some guys have a certain knack with a certain move. Right. I'm saying some, hey, it's all risk versus reward. I'm not saying don't try something new, but sometimes you can bite the bullet there. And right there, Moore takes one to the boot to the mouth, and Drake Jacobs to the second rope. He doesn't connect there. Going for a flying back elbow, and oh! Chris Moore made him pay there. And Jacob's a little out of sorts right now, and it all goes back. Two and oh, he got up with just mere seconds to spare. Yep, yep. It all goes back to the, the missed opportunity there in the corner. And I, I get it in a match like this where your opponent is so similar to you. You're trying to pull some different tricks out of the bag to change it up, catch him off guard. But uh, that's always the risk you run. If it doesn't work, you're going to pay big time. One more, there we go. Scoops him up, and ooh, what a reversal. Yeah, Dre slid through. And they both went for the same move there, and but Dre's coming out on top. Mm. Mm. This is, yeah, this is just a fight right now. I mean, these are punches and kicks, and then do a pin to the champion, and he just barely, more barely kicked out. He grabbed the bottom rope there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say. The fan cam's a little shaky, but, uh, it's, you know, Fan cam is pretty good, you know, gets us the footage we need. No, this, this, yeah, this is, I, I've seen much worse in the annals of fan cam. Oh, yes. Jacob seems to uh, be indicating that he's ready to put this thing away. And this is with the clothesline. Scoop slam here. Oh, power, power slam. Turn it into a power slam. Yeah, you're not, I don't know how you're going to scoop slam a man of uh, Dre Jacob's size in a two count there. It's going to take a little more than that to take down Jacobs. I mean, he's a, like I said, he's a powerhouse. You know, he's hard to beat. He has a lot of strength and anger behind him. I so. got to say, though, he's got a little more size on him than Chris, than Chris Moore. Um, so if anyone's going to get gassed in this match sooner, my money's on it being J Dre Jacobs. I think the longer this thing goes, it, it's better for Chris Moore. And a spear right there. And, of course, Ooh. Chris Moore with more experience as well. Mercenary driver. And he nails it. He nails it's it. It's over. That, that could should be the end. One, two, and oh. Okay, okay. That's the match right there. I, we that, have a winner. That yeah. should be a three count. Johnny Delicious just put his hands on the official. So um, why ain't there this Why ain't this referee getting Johnny Delicious out of here? Well, he seems to be indicating that. But for, in my opinion, that that he's telling him he was helping him with a shoe. That's game, set, and match right there, helping him with his shoe. Well, look Mind. out behind you, John. Yeah, delicious. Was, has he been hired by the Trump administration to provide spin now? <laughs> um, he might not be in a good place at this This time. is, you know, but this is this is not what the champion wants to do here. If this match is still going, and I've seen no indication from the official that it is not still going, Chris Moore's attention needs to be on Dre Jacobs in the ring. Well, like I said, that's what Johnny Delicious does best. It helps his cheats. clients. He cheats. It helps his men to win. And now, and now that little butterball is in the ring. <laughs> and he's trying to beg off. Come on, this is Chris Moore. He's got to be smarter than this, though. Listen to the crowd telling them to hurt him. Well, I, I ugh, a kick straight to the back of the head by Dre Jacobs. And off the ropes. Ooh, what a lariat. It's a devastating lariat clothesline. One, two, and a three, and a spray, absolutely disgraceful. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new Downriver champion. And a shame to see a championship change hands in such a fashion. This 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 official should be right. Hey, this official is pretty good in my book. And there is my partner, D. Anthony, handing the championship over to the official. He lost total control of this match. A, an, 
a manager put his hands on the official, disrupted a count, and the official, not only did he not disqualify that manager's client, he didn't even remove that official or that manager from ringside. You talk about rank and competence. This official has got to go. All right, well, Johnny Delicious has a few words. Let's hear what he has to say here. He's inviting DeAnthony into the ring. Crowd won't let him speak, man. The boos are so loud at this moment. But we're going to let him speak, so I'm going to shut up and let's hear what he has to say. indeed to hand over the championship to him. Uh, oh. You seem to be rooting the guy on, so hands it to his client. Completely disrespected your partner here. And what is that? Dre Jacobs just stomped on the Down River Championship. What is this? Blatant disrespect. You're okay with this? No, I am not. And ladies and gentlemen, I was there live for this, and we were not happy whatsoever. Watch what Giant Delicious does here. I am so, oh, he just spits on the championship. Are you serious? And then he doesn't just do it once. He does it twice. This is not just disrespectful to the championship. It's disrespectful to the profession. Johnny Delicious and Dre Jacobs are human trash. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, we were, me and D were very upset. So what you're about to see here is a promo from me and D. Um, that is it for us here at the studio. Um, for Harper, for Mud Puppet Joel, thank you for watching another edition of Matchup. <sighs> oh, well, you think that's bad. Wait until you see what he does when he gets out of here. I I'm so mad I can't even talk no more. Just, just, oh. here. If you're a wrestler, manager, or a promoter, and you want to be on the show, just email us, heelfannews at yahoo.com, and we'll get back to you. See you at the next one. Three, two, one, go. Really? Really, Johnny Delicious? Really? Oh, you have upset the Heel Fan News show by the blatant disrespect that you and Dre Jacobs showed for our championship. You sit there, you get a title shot, you, you know, we, we hook you guys up. And not because y'all didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve it. But to disrespect us like that. You stomped on the belt. You spit on it. Johnny Delicious, this is a war you do not want. See, we're a TV show, yes, I'll give you that. But we can find the power to pay you back. Tell him, boss. You know, there's nothing to say, man. You, you saw what happened out there. Johnny Delicious, Dre Jacobs, you want to disrespect, you want to disrespect us? You want to disrespect our show? You want to disrespect our title? I'll tell you what, if I got to go to XICW, if I got to go to Clash Wrestling, hell, if I got to go to AAW to find someone, we're going to get that title back. Matter of fact, I got to make a phone call. Somebody owe me a favor. See you at the next one. You're watching Heel Fan News, filmed in downtown Wyandotte at the Jack and Caroline Sotheby Studio. We are on Wyandotte Cable Channel 15 and HD 215. Boy.
we'll, uh, we'll film more later, all right? Uh, see you later, man. Hold up. You don't go anywhere. Right here. Right here. So you're going to make a phone call here, Fan News? You want to call somebody because we took your little title? This trophy right here says I can take whatever I want. Tonight, I took Matt Hagen's dignity. Next, whoever you want to put in front of us with this deep down river DRC championship. We don't care. Does it look like we care? We took out Chris Moore, and now where's Chris Moore? He's gone. So make your little phone call. I'll disrespect that title as long as it's in my possession, because that's what it is. Dre Jacobs is a beast, and Dre Jacobs the beast will keep that title with him as long as we want it. <sighs>